And the first uh, speaker of today is uh, Theo Marie. Theo got his PhD in 2017 in Toulouse, and then he moved to uh, Manchester for a couple of years working with uh, Nick Hayam, and now he's back in, in France at CNRS in Paris. And he got uh, an honorable mention at the last I was older for his PhD thesis. And today is going to talk about uh, mixed precision, low rank compression of data sparse matrices. Tell, please, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Davide. Let me share my screen. Okay, hopefully, you should all see my slides now. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, so hello, everybody. Uh, let me start by thanking the organizers for their kind invitation to speak in this new uh, common array series. So for those that want to follow the talk uh, with the slides on their own uh, desktop, they are downloadable here at uh, bit.ly common array. So um, this talk is a collaboration with six of my uh, colleagues uh, who I would like to acknowledge uh, on this slide. So the floating point landscape has uh, witnessed quite a few changes in the recent years uh, with the emergence of low precision arithmetics, in particular with half precision. Uh, so the two most uh, widely used half precision formats so far have been the BFLOAT16 and FP16 formats, which are now both supported by uh, many of the major hardware vendors. And so there is a growing interest in exploiting these low precisions to get the benefits that they offer. Um, so reduced storage, data movement, communications, but also increased speed. Something I want to highlight is that the speed that we can expect from these low precisions is not always proportional to the number of, of bits. So for example, going from uh, FP32 to FP16, single to half precision, on these GPU tensor cores, we can expect uh, a speed up much larger than 2x, uh, something like 8x on the Volta architectures. And it's even been announced to increase to 16x on the next generation. So there is a clear uh, motivation to use these low precisions, but the correspondingly low accuracy that they can uh, provide is usually not sufficient in uh, most general purpose applications. And for this reason, there is a renewed interest in uh, mixed precision algorithms that combine these low precisions with higher ones. So looking at NLA, uh, the mixed precision algorithms have been uh, quite successful. Uh, iterative refinement is probably the uh, most famous example, but really in the, in the recent years, there's been a mixed precision variants of most of the major NLA uh, kernels. And in fact, this is precisely the uh, objective of this work. We want to derive a mixed precision variant of a important NLA kernel, which is uh, low rank compression. So low rank compression, uh, given a dense matrix A, it consists in approximating it by a lower rank product, XY transpose, where R is uh, hopefully small. More formally, we can define the epsilon rank of a matrix as the smallest rank such that there exists a matrix uh, of that rank, R epsilon, such that uh, it approximates the uh, matrix A with relative accuracy epsilon in some norm. And we know that the optimal epsilon approximation in any unitarily invariant norm is given by uh, the truncated SVD. So that is the uh, SVD that you obtain by uh, stopping after R epsilon uh, single values. So this is all uh, quite well-known material. The question that we want to ask in this talk is what precision, what floating point arithmetic we should use to store this truncated SVD in? So there is a naive answer. Uh, we want an accuracy of at least epsilon, so we should use Whatever, uh, uh, whatever precision is uh, safely smaller than epsilon. So uh, for example, if epsilon is uh, smaller than the unit round of single precision, uh, we need to use double precision. 
So the keyword here is uh, naive. This is a naive answer. And to explain why, let me uh, take an example. So consider some uh, SVD, U sigma V transpose. And importantly, uh, assume that we have a, a rapid decay of singular values. So something uh, like a log linear distribution, for example. And assume that the requested accuracy epsilon equals 10 to the minus 9. So the, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to truncate uh, whatever singular values are, are smaller than this value, as I've explained. And the naive approach now is to store uh, everything in double precision, because as I've mentioned, the unit Randolph of, of single precision is larger than 10 to the minus 9 in this case. Um, so what we're proposing is to partition this SVD into two groups, u1 sigma1 v1 and u2 sigma2 v2, uh, in such a way that the norm of sigma2 will be less than epsilon over the unit one of, of single precision, which is in, in this example is equal to 0 0.02. So it's a fairly large number. And so for a rapid decay of single values, we can expect the second group to be much larger than the first. And now what we're proposing is to convert uh, the second group to single precision. And we claim that this is going to uh, be satisfying. So of course, we're going to introduce an error that is proportional to the unit round of single precision with this conversion, but it's also going to be proportional to the norm of sigma two. And so by construction, we're going to end up with an error uh, of order epsilon. So this is the basic intuitive idea. Uh, it's easy to formalize, and we can also uh, generalize it to any number of precisions, not just two, so u1, u2, up to up. And we can assume epsilon uh, without loss of generality to be uh, between u1 and u2, so that the naive approach is uh, store everything in precision u1. And now, uh, we're going to define some index sets, SK, which are going to tell us uh, which singular vectors and values we're going to store in the precision UK. So we will take all singular values that are in between epsilon over precision UK plus one and epsilon over precision UK. And this is our group number K, which we're going to store in precision UK. And now if we define T hat, the truncated SVD that we obtained by doing exactly that. Then we can prove the following. The error that we introduce by converting group number k to precision uk is of order uh, uk times norm of sigma k, which by construction uh, will be less than something of order epsilon norm of a. And so if we sum these errors for uh, all of the p groups, uh, we will obtain an overall approximation at t hat that satisfies the relative accuracy of order epsilon. And the constant here uh, in this uh, big O is going to be small. It's going to depend on the number of precisions. So for example, with two precisions, uh, this is going to be a constant three. With three precisions, it's uh, five. So it's clear it's a, it's a small constant. Uh, and so this proves that we can use precisions potentially much lower than epsilon and still get a result that is of order uh, epsilon. And I want to uh, also emphasize that I've used the SVD here, but actually uh, this is applicable to many other uh, kinds of uh, low rank decompositions. What we really need for this to work is some decay property. So we need to be able to partition uh, the decomposition into several groups. And so for example, uh, QR, uh, rank revealing QR would also work. <coughs> so, I also must uh, immediately say that the, the gain that we can expect from this approach completely depends on the matrix. It completely depends on what kind of distribution of the singular values we have. So here you have two examples. Both matrices have an epsilon rank of 30, but they are actually very different. The first has one large singular value and all 29 remaining singular values are just slightly larger than epsilon. So here we can expect to have a very large gain because all these singular values here, uh, they can be stored in, in very low precision. And the singular vectors that are associated with it, of course. 
uh, on the right, uh, instead we have 30 singular values that are equal. So in this case, uh, we will not get any gain. We have to store everything in the, in the highest precision. But neither of these two cases is very interesting. A more interesting case is the log linear distribution that I've mentioned. In this case, what we typically will observe is that we'll have several groups. We we'll have a first group in the, in the highest precision, for example, double precision. Then we have a, a second group in single precision. Why not a third group in half precision? And then finally, the, the final group is just the, the group uh, that is discarded because it's smaller uh, than epsilon. Um, okay, so in the, in the second part of this talk, what I want to do is discuss one specific uh, application of this idea to a class of matrices that uh, exhibits this kind of log linear uh, distribution. And this class of matrices is called data sparse. So it's, a, it's an important class because it, it arises in several applications, such as uh, integral equations, um, discretized PDEs, uh, covariance matrices, and, and many others. So what what they have in common is they, they share a uh, block Lorentz structure. That is to say that if we look at some of the subblocks of a data sparse matrix, uh, these blocks are of low rank. And the reason really is common to these applications that there is a, a underlying geometry. Uh, and a block in this case describes an interaction between uh, subdomains. And we can actually prove that for uh, large distances, we have a small rank. So we have a rapid decay. So it's clear uh, from this discussion that there is a high potential uh, to use mixed precision compression in this uh, application. And in this talk, we're going to focus on a, on a specific subclass of data sparse matrices, uh, which we call BLR for block low rank. So they are one of the simplest uh, data sparse representations. Uh, we use a flat um, 2D block partitioning, as you can see here on, on the figure where uh, the diagonal blocks are always going to be full rank and where the off diagonal blocks uh, are, can be either low rank or full rank depending uh, if their epsilon rank is small enough. So uh, in this case here, uh, this is an example where the darkness of the block is proportional to the epsilon rank. And obviously the, the picture depends on the value of epsilon. So here for 10 to minus 15, we have a 50% compression in the sense that we only need to keep 50% of the entries of the full matrix. And if I increase epsilon, then uh, this becomes uh, lower and the picture becomes lighter and so, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is the, the class of matrices that, that I want to talk about, um, but there are other data sparse uh, representations in particular hierarchical ones are, are very famous uh, like H or HSS. And I think it's clear that this mixed precision approach also applies to them, but this is not something I'm going to go into today. Okay, so first of all, we need to define how we're going to approximate the given block AIJ of the matrix. There is essentially two ways we can do that. We can seek a, a local compression or a global compression. And this differs in whether we seek uh, relative accuracy uh, relative to the norm of the block AIJ or to the norm of the global matrix. Um, so it's quite easy to see that for some choices of norm, uh, global compression increases uh, the, the error, but only by a factor that is bounded. And in general, what we have observed uh, experimentally uh, is that this extra error uh, is worse because we also get a much lower uh, compression. So uh, you have an example here on this matrix where local compression, we need to keep 38% of the entries of the full matrix, but with global compression, we only need 23%. So it's uh, clearly uh, worth doing. <clears throat> and the reason I, I'm mentioning this local versus global um, comparison is because now in, in mixed precision, it becomes quite interesting. So obviously first we need to adapt the definition of the sets here that we had that tells us uh, you know, which singular values and singular vectors we store in, in which precision. So here we're just going to have the norm of the block AIJ for local compression or the norm of A for global compression. But what's interesting is that with global compression, uh, we can see that the set S1, which is the, the singular vectors that we need to store in the, in the highest precision can be empty. So just to take an example, uh, with double and single precisions, if we have some blocks of the matrix 
whose norm is smaller than this quantity here, uh, these blocks can be stored entirely in single precision. So we don't actually need a mixed precision representation. And I, I want to, to emphasize this, this property by taking an example here. Um, so we will have essentially three categories of blocks. We'll have the, the full rank blocks, also sometimes called the, the near field, which we're going to store entirely in the highest precision, for example, double precision. And at the other extreme, we'll have the far field blocks, which as I've just explained, we can store entirely in single precision. But what's interesting is that you can see that the majority of the blocks are in neither of these two categories. The majority of the blocks are in the midfield, which is where we need this mixed precision approach. Okay, so it's quite important to realize that just storing each block in either single or double precision is, is not subtle enough, it's not enough. Okay, so moving on to the experimental part of this talk, uh, I'm going to present some results on, on a number of different matrices. They're all actually coming from the sure complement of uh, sparse matrices. <clears throat> and I want to start by just showing some results with standard BLR. So on the top here, I'm showing the compression uh, in, in just full double precision. So the numbers here on the y-axis correspond to the number of entries that we need to keep, the percentage uh, with respect to the full matrix uh, as before. So it goes from 80% you know, to something around 30% compression. And on the bottom, you've got the corresponding error. And so now, of course, we want to see what uh, mixed precision uh, does to these uh, results. So we add single precision to the mixed. And here uh, on the top, of course, we're considering a single precision entry to be you know, half the, the storage of a double precision one. And you can see that uh, we get some significant reduction in the, in the storage up to 1.7x. And the error uh, does not increase much as of course we, we expected it. Uh, and no reason to just do two precisions, we can add a half precision to the mix and we further get a reduction now up to 2.2x and the error still hasn't uh, changed much. So these results are for uh, epsilon equals 10 to minus 12, which is relatively small. And I, I want to show what happens if I increase it to 10 to minus nine. So now obviously all the compressions have gotten better, but what's interesting is that the, the gain that we get from using uh, mixed precision is better as well. So it's uh, up to 2.7 X now. And uh, of course, this is because we have now more room to use lower precisions because epsilon has, has gotten larger. And so I, I also want to highlight another trend, uh, which is the influence of problem size on these gains. So here I'm just uh, taking the same kind of matrix uh, coming from a Laplacian sort of increasing size. And here you can see the, the evolution of the gains. Uh, they are small at first, like 1.6x here, but they increase with the problem size up to 1.9x in this example. So this is also quite a, an encouraging uh, trend in the sense that, you know, to tackle large scale matrices. So, so far I've just shown results in terms of storage, but of course, something that we, uh, care very much about in, in this uh, data sparse matrix field is the cost of factorizing. And obviously because of the data sparsity, we can already uh, reduce the cost of, you know, for example, LU factorization quite significantly. Uh, but what we propose here is to further reduce this cost by using uh, mixed precision arithmetic. So, just to explain how that would work, uh, consider you know, some, some low rank uh, matrix T with a mixed precision representation. If you want to operate on it, say for example, multiply it with a vector, it's quite clear that what you can do is rewrite this product as a sum of, of you know, P products where you're going to multiply each group in the corresponding precision that it is stored in. Okay, so we can not only reduce storage, but also you know, use lower precision in the, in the computations. In terms of uh, error analysis, um, Nick Hyam and I have this uh, error analysis of the BLR factorization in uniform precision U that essentially uh, just tells us that it's uh, numerically stable. Um, I think it's quite easy to see that using mixed precision arithmetic is not going to change that conclusion. This is something that we're uh, still uh, doing, 
but we think it, it's only going to increase the, the constant. So just some preliminary results. So I don't have any timings. Uh, this is just MATLAB. So what I'm going to show instead are flops. Um, so here on the top, I'm showing the flops compression. That is the percentage of flops that we need to do to factorize the matrix with respect to a uh, factorizing the full matrix, like the two thirds of n cube uh, cost of value factorization. So you can see that it's uh, significantly reduced just by using data sparsity up to you know five percent compression. But this is only uh, double precision. So now if we add uh, mixed precision uh, here, we can get uh, significant uh, reductions in terms of flops. So here, what assumption am I using? I'm, I, I'm assuming that a single precision flop is half the cost of a double precision flop, and a half precision flop is a quarter of the cost. So essentially, I'm assuming that everything is proportional to the number of bits. And under the assumption, uh, we get up to 3.3x reduction of the number of flops, with, uh, again, almost no increase of the error. Uh, so this is quite encouraging, I think. Of course, what we're all wondering uh, is whether that means we're going to get a 3.3x reduction in time. So that is something that we can't answer at the time. We need to do a high performance implementation of, of this idea. Um, but one thing uh, that I wanted to mention is, as I said at the beginning of this talk, sometimes we get time reductions that are uh, larger than what the number of bits would suggest, like with tensor cores. So if we plug those assumptions in, we, we get up to 7x. Uh, reduction. Uh, so I think this is clearly a little bit optimistic or perhaps very much optimistic, but it still shows that there is quite a lot of potential here um, behind this mixed precision uh, approach. Okay, so time to wrap up. I've presented a mixed precision uh, approach to SVD or uh, for that matter any uh, low rank uh, compression. So essentially what we've asked is given a matrix A and a target accuracy epsilon, in what precision should we represent uh, the low rank approximation of A? The naive answer uh, I think that has been used so far uh, is that we should use a precision uh, whose unit Randolph is less than epsilon. But our answer is that actually it depends on the singular values of the matrix. If uh, they are rapidly decaying, then we might be able to use precisions that are actually uh, lower than epsilon. Um, and as I've mentioned, uh, I focused on SVD, but you know, this is applicable uh, to QR and, and perhaps to other kind of decompositions. And then we've applied this to the compression of data sparse matrices, which are an ideal application due to their structure and achieved up to 2.7x reduction in storage using three precisions and up to 3.3x reduction in flops. And as regards to future work, uh, I think that the main thing that we want to do is implement this on a, in a high performance code and see what kind of time reduction we get. I have a few references at the end of uh, these slides for people that are interested. And with that, I, I conclude. Thank you all uh, for your attention. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Theo, for your, for your talk. We have some minutes for questions. Um, Usam, any question from Zoom? Uh, there is no questions on Zoom, but I have one. Um, so on slide uh, 16, I think, or 15. Um, so when you multiply, uh, well, maybe the, then this slide, yeah, this slide. So when you apply the, uh, the vector on uh, on the sum. Um, do you so? Do you need to store the vector in multiple precisions? Um, no, because in this case, okay. So the the sum here, you would well, you, you need to convert the the vector if that's what you're asking. So the vector you would typically store it in the in the highest precision. And then you can perform each of these products independently in the, in the lower precision. So then to compute that, you need to have the vector in, in the precision that you want to, to do the computation in. So that, that's the main reason why flops reduction and time reduction might not be the same because we have to do some conversions during the, the computations. Okay. So you convert the vector V for each 
precision you want to you have, and then you sum up the uh, the result. Yes, and and there are a few more subtleties in uh, which precision you should use to accumulate then the, the sum in which precision you should do the sum. So mm -hmm. obviously you can just do it in the highest precision, but there's a few more tricks like you, you could do it in the reverse order by gradually increasing the precision so there, there's quite a few tricks involved that i, that I didn't really uh, go into detail okay thank you i think that's all for the questions uh at zoom okay thank you sam um jemima any questions from youtube uh no there aren't any questions from youtube okay so then uh, i would like to thank theo again Thank yeah, you very much for your time.